going on everybody c4 welcome back to the channel today we're for episode four of the hardest rebuild in madden 23 where today we're going to go through years five and six of this 10-year rebuild where we started with the worst team you could possibly make in madden 23 and the only way we can get better is by drafting udfa undrafted free agent grade players the undraftables the undesirables players no one thinks have an opportunity to make it at the next level and after four full seasons we are up to an 80 overall we have an offense that has a lot of dev traits even though we've lost an x-factor in middleton who was an x-factor progressed down to a superstar we are still very optimistic that this team is only going to continue to get better and when all is said and done we're going to be the best team in the nfl offensively things have taken shape here brand new quarterback at least we found think we found ourselves a quarterback in scotty cousins a 25 year old quarterback out of boise state Going into his third season, he's an 80 star dev, and he, no, he's solid. He's solid. He's a scrambler. He's a gamey quarterback. Might not have the cannon of the arm. Might not honestly have a lot of uh, desirable traits that you would like to see in a franchise quarterback, but he's been able to find a way to get the job done. Offensive line's taking shape. Obviously, Middleton, as you mentioned, was an X-Factor. Got rest down to a superstar. Still very good. Our wide receiver room is solid. We just added in another rookie with a dev trait, Gordon Sitton. Out of Boston College, 5'8", 190, pure speed. You know, he's our Andy Isabella, if you will. Not to typecast, but that's really what he's going to be. And I would still say my favorite player on this offense is Chris Noble, the power back out of Maryland. Six feet tall, 229, 85 overall. And you get every bit of that 89 truck, 86 strength with Chris Noble. Every time we get to hop in on the sticks and play with him, he is so fun. Defensively, I think you can almost make an argument. Defense might be a little bit better than the offense. Take a look at the defense. We have Stephen Henry, who is, I think he's a top five defensive end. Started as a UDFA. Uh, his really development has been probably the most impressive on this team on offense or defense. But we still got Wakefield at D-tackle. He has superstar. We drafted Zimmerman, a hidden dev defensive tackle. It's looking to push. Uh, for some playing reps the linebacking core is solid yancey has kind of fluctuated between superstar and bound to star dev uh, i think out of all of the dev trait regressions we've seen so far in this rebuild his has been the most like i kind of wish we had dev trade off because he shouldn't have lost he had like 140 tackles but it is what it is and we got our x factor one of the best players in the nfl Jaden church who we drafted year one of this rebuild because he had 99 hit power and since then he's really kind of completed he went from a pure hitter a feared most feared you know play a ultimate team tag into a complete safety who does it all he can cover he can play a little bit of linebacker so this team here we are very excited again the crop of rookies that we ended last video with we got a hidden dev guard frederickson we got a hidden dev wide receiver we have a hidden dev defensive tackle we have a hidden dev linebacker just give me one superstar don't give me all silvers give me one goldie boy maybe even a red boy and that is going to be massive for this team going forward. So, yes, we are here for years five and six. We got some wins last year. First time we're starting to find a little bit of success with the squad. Looking to build on it here in year five. I still don't think we're quite ready to set the lofty goal of making the playoffs. But I'd like to start to be able to consistently hit this seven-win threshold. And then maybe next year, going into year six, we can hit we want playoffs or bust. But this year, we're going seven wins. So through the season, anytime we get a divisional game to kind of open up the year, that is definitely one that we want to circle for our four games, or at least one of our four games that we want to hop in and get on the sticks and see what we can do with the squad. So let's see if we can start this year out 1-0 undefeated within the division with a big win over the New York Giants. Let's go BDN, the new BDN, Big Dick Nick Sirianni, trying to complete the hardest challenge that's ever been done. It all starts here, 1-0. Oh, my God, man. Chris Noble, if you don't know, now you know. Let's go, Chamberlain, the fastest wide receiver not named Tyreek Hill in the league. Big time shot play. Oh, great play. He misses a tackle in Middleton. Is in for the touchdown. Opening drive score. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Giants just... Insta score though. Let's go respond. It's gonna be a shootout. I kind of backed up here. Two pretty shit play calls. Sets us up third and nine. But let's see if we can go right back. Middleton is motivated. 
after losing that X Factor, but Thibodeau is even more so. Bringing down our quarterback, three and out. Dang. All right, we get to play defense right away. There we go. They know. They know. It's the reports are out that you can beat with fullback dives in the red zone. We're going to try to clean that up a little bit. Oh, my God. Let's go. Bed don't break. Third and goal. Let's go. Uh, we'll go church. Let's get the X factor here. Watch 49. Watch the running back. And we get pressure. It is Wakefield, the superstar D tackle. Bringing down Tua and holding to a field goal. Now we take over this drive. Third and nine at the 42, just outside of field goal range. Be smart with the football. Let's go to the best tight end that's been undrafted since Antonio Gates. Second and goal. This is one of our favorite plays to actually get the ball into Middleton's hands. Usually pretty good for a touchdown. Oh, he has to do some work, but he's able to look for it. He almost welcomes that rather than just walk running. Look for some contact. Middleton, touchdown. Go, Birds. Now we're coming in third and ten, trying to bail them out just before the two-minute warning. I'm actually going to go Yancey because I think he wants to go 49. If I had to guess, which player is going to try to... Well, it was ugly, but it's still a stop. Man, this is like one of those, let's bring him down. There's no fucking way! No, put me in offense. Look at the fuck about defense. Fuck me, man. What's going on in season opener? That's not P.I. All right. What in what league is that not P.I.? Give me all this fucking game. Unreal. Skip the moments, obviously. Give me all this fucking shit, man. Don't care. You know what? I was like, I was getting ready just to fucking rage this whole season. And then we follow up week two with a win. Let me know our team's just not, you know, we're not 45-21 to the fucking Giants bad. 28-21 over the Dolphins. Scotty Cousins, three touchdowns, no pick. 72 yards, Noble. Dion Young, 81-yard bomb. Middleton continues to dominate. Noble had the receiving touchdown. Defensively, we got some pressure. Stephen Henry, two sacks. Second half, Bryce Tucker. Okay, we can get similar. And the Dolphins were like an 84 overall. Legit team. All right, I got I to gotta, I gotta get a win here. We got to get on the sticks. My first day sitting back in the office after a bachelor party, I still feel like a perma-fried and wait... I, we got to get a dub here, man. We got to get the wheels turning. Week three, Dallas. Let's go. All right, starting out on defense. Third and four. I'll tell you right now, I already don't like that play call. Got to get home. If not, it's going to be such, something super easy across the middle. Or that. I will say the one thing. I've been pretty good at getting interceptions. Not so much when we play with this team. I don't know if there's something to be said there, but that is outstanding job on the outside on the screen pass. D tackle Wakefield eating that one alive. Third and goal. Chase to hold to a field goal after a pretty extended driver from Dallas. Oh, you literally just you spoke it into existence. We spoke it into existence. Jaden Church picks off Dak zero for Dallas. Come on, let's go off it. Yeah, hell yeah. Give me control. Go back. Middleton, middle of the field. We need to, I think we do need to get a third tight end, though. I'm pretty sure my offensive tackle's been my third tight end. Don't need that. Fuck, man. Instant pressure from Mike. I mean, it's Mike Parsons. Holy, man. I, like, this is going to be one of those ones we got to do dink and dunks. We're not going to be able to have enough time to let these plays develop. Man, so how does he play Dallas? Michael Parsons is a cheat code. As much as we like to think, Cowboys rating guy just made the Dallas Cowboys playbook really good, which I'm not going to say anything about that. Michael Parsons should be a game wrecker, and he is. Now they're third down, trying to keep the drive alive. This one here, I'm looking right at Milton on Lavander Esch. It's inside. 
He gets the first down. Go Noble. Oh, that better not be any sort of blocking. We had that first down. Come on. And that's, yeah, that's a tough catch. Four verts, Trey Middleton. Why not? He's been our go-to guy. No turnovers, so I'll take three. Oh, of course you're going to give me a, like, should we just go for it? Fourth and two on the ten. What would Nick Sirianni do? Of course, of course. They're two superstars are the guys that are awaiting Noble. Nah, nothing. No push. God damn it! Oh, yeah, the, right there. Right there is your fucking script bullshit, man. Three of my guys, I use your dive on it, and still he instant picks up the fumble. Get the fuck out of here. Unfortunately, didn't win that one. Don't know why. Week 7, we get actually another victory in the division. 28-21 over the Commanders with Stephen Henry, defensive end, getting three sacks in the contest. Right before our bye week, we get another victory over the Carolina Panthers, 31-24. And I actually think when all said, man, Scotty Cousins is having a year. Feels like every time we check in, he's having three touchdowns plus. That over a full season, man, is going to be pretty big. Seven catches, 104 yards, two tutties for Denzel Chamberlain. Looking like he's probably getting the game ball interception for our top corner, Dwayne Carruthers. But our third victory of the year comes over the Panthers. So take a look at our contract extensions. Who needs to be getting a bag? It's interesting. It's interesting. I think uh, Tommy Mann, outside linebacker, should be kind of one of our first priorities. Again, yeah, we could literally offer these guys absurd amount of money because our salary cap situation. So we'll start with Tommy Mann, outside linebacker. Well, he's been... You know, a little bit slow as far as development is concerned. Why not? We have John Maynard, wide receiver, has been solid. One of our kind of safety net type targets. So let's get him three years. Pump that up to four and two. Somewhere in the range. Three years, $18 million. Got him locked up. But the biggest contract is the speedster, Denzel Chamberlain. The first, first round pick. I'd be like, let's give him four. We're going to give him four years. He's, he's the epitome. He's the face of this rebuild. Getting him locked up for four more years the remainder of his career. At least the remainder of his prime. Oh, how we do that? The Jets are like one of the best teams in the league. 28-21. Yancey, eight tackles, two picks, and we just took down one of the best teams in the AFC. Do we? I don't really want to play Dallas again. I'm going to be honest. That, that was not a fun game at all. I think our I think our final two games, were, we're, I don't want to take on Dallas. It's just Micah Parsons. God damn, man. Micah Parsons. I just, you know, I said, ah, suck it. 31-10. Suck it, Dallas. Our goal this year was seven wins. We do get our seventh win of the year. Week 15 over the Saints. But I am eyeing week 17 and 18 back-to-back -back as our final two games to hop on the stick. See if we can... Well, let's just see right now. We'll bring it live. Can we beat... In terms of our opponents this year, one of the easier opponents we've had, the Rams. We get back-to-back -back dubs. There's a chance of playoffs. Nine wins could squeak us in the wild card. Oh, what an over-the-shoulder throw and catch into Commander's territory. No, come on, man. Like, why? Why, man? Like, three games I played. Three of the four games that I'm playing has been, like, just straight-up bullshit. Can I get a clean game here, please? Got squiggly lines. Great. Got the squiggly lines. Love it. Love it! Let's go! C4, your controller's too expensive to smash. You're an adult. You're an adult. Don't smash your controller. You're an adult. Take a shot towards the end zone. Worst case, you know, get at least points before half. All right. Good effort, fellas. Good effort. It's been a lot funner when I'm not playing. It's weird. <laughs> 
You know what? At this point, it's like, all right, when I actually hop it on the sticks, that's when like our team gets their losses. You know, that's what it feels like right now. Like if this if this is holding, I'm just sipping this one out. I'm already bored. But if it's rough in the passer, let's keep going, man. Let's get a touchdown and try to get our team back in it. Even with the squiggly lines. Man, how about just like your 92 overall tight end fumbling and just setting the tone for the rest of the game? And we got to go back to him because he's our best player. That's just, come on, man. Like literally let anybody else do it. Punish me for not going to my best players. But when I go to my best players, I shouldn't be punished. I'll say this. And this is obviously just frustration, boy. But like anytime you do a series like this, the number one most consistent thing that makes doing a cupcake series is when you go up against like a like an edge rusher it becomes unreasonably difficult like yeah just you know Mike Parsons Chase Young insta shed in your face two seconds after every snap just let me have this just let me have this please for my sanity I gotta get back on the right track for next season let me have this So at the end of year five, we'll knock her back up to the uh, serious stuff. I need that though. Now I got a smile on my face. I feel good going to the next year. The Bengals defeat the Lions. 38-22 Joe Mixon, who uh, I feel bad for anybody else like myself that went up against Joe Mixon. My two and five fantasy team actually scored like a respectable amount of points. And I would have won if I didn't go up against Joe Mixon and his five touchdowns. I also, on Christmas a couple years ago, went up against Alvin Kamara in fantasy when he had like six touchdowns. Big old lump of coal for old C4 on Christmas. I don't know. I just can't, I can't escape it, man. Uh, take a look at our regular season stats. Luckily, that last game kind of helped us out a little bit. Scotty Cousins finished with 4,100 yards, 31 touchdowns, 17 picks. Solid, I guess, all things considered. Over 1,000 yards, 14 touchdowns for Chris Noble. 3-4 and four for Scotty Cousins. 5 touchdowns for a backup running back, Palmer. Uh, wide receiver room, 86 catches, almost 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns for Chamberlain. 9-5 and five for Maynard. 870 and 11 for Trey Milton. That might be good enough to bump him back up to X Factor, which he probably should be at, to be honest with you. Defensively, Jaden Church, 134 tackles, four interceptions. We got a buck 33, 10 TFLs, two sacks, two picks for George Yancey. 12 and a half sacks on 11 TFLs for Stephen Henry. 16 TFLs, five sacks for our superstar defensive tackles, Sean Wakefield. And for the interception, Church led the team with four. Hargrave had four. Two for Yancey, two for Dion Reese, two for Jason Kelly. Taking a look here at the yearly awards, a.k.a. can we roll an offensive or defensive rookie of the year? MVP goes to Josh Allen, Saquon. We got Brian Burns. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Mason Cole. We didn't really have anybody in the area code. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Roman Knight. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we're at that point now where our rookies aren't instantly starting, and usually we don't get great rookies right away anyways. So, uh... Hey, kicker of the year! Sure, give me the dev on him. As it relates to our squad, uh, Fredrickson was hidden dev from the rookie. He was star. No ups or downs as it relates to dev trade. Sitton was our hidden dev wide receiver. He's star as well. Again, I was kind of hoping Middleton might have an opportunity or X Factor, but still not going to complain about a superstar. On the defensive side, Walden was a hidden dev linebacker. He popped just a star dev. And we, ooh, Stephen Henry was star. He's up to superstar after his very impressive double-digit sack season. We did lose, unfortunately, a star dev here. Randy Keys was a star dev. He went down to normal, but at least, you know, we're still net on the D-line. You know, we lose a dev, but we gain one there for Henry. So that is a win. I would have loved to see maybe Hargrove, who had four picks, go up dev and get something there in the corner room. But overall, pretty happy with this. 
given this season. Given especially when we hopped on the sticks, how fucking bad that was. We're going to be on the fifth year option of our center, Alex Gibson. And honestly, you'll see, I think our first round pick this year is going to be a center as well. Easily look like the best guy available. And that might give us the flexibility to take Gibson and move him to one of the tackle spots. Maybe left tackle. And this is something that like I've seen a couple times. Usually like it's fullback. But as I go back to the pick up the off to the center, no draftable centers in this draft. Yet I guarantee there's a couple that are probably high 60s, low 70s. Scott Kane looks like he'd be pretty good. Calvin Wheeler looked like he'd be pretty good. But as soon as I saw the double A and one B on Matt Stanley, I knew this was a guy. I don't know if we're gonna get a dev with it. 6'4, 294. I mean, maybe he could be a tackle potentially, especially if he's a hidden dev. He's only on a normal. But I'm still expecting, you know, 71, 72, somewhere in that range. Easiest pick of this draft. We're still desperately trying to chase. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if it's ever going to exist, like a superstar UDFA corner. But uh, I'll take an opportunity here, take a swing at the fastest player in the draft as it relates to the defensive side of the football. And Cedric French. It's not even that fast. We don't really know D-Tackle, but again, you know, I sound like a broken record. When you're picking through the UDFAs, you go for traits. And Greg Johnson with his 39 elite strength in the bench press. Kind of, I'm not going to lie, kind of was chasing a dev trait there. It's worked before, but it should be still a solid player. Honestly, I mean, the other setter's still there on the board. Calvin Wheeler. Don't have a whole lot of scouting on him. Combine does look pretty damn good. So, hey, why not? And Chris Noble's not going to be around forever. And even though we got the meme in our last video, David Beckham at running back, Terrell Gilliard at a Central Florida, a ball carrier vision, a break tackle, and uh, every the combo, generally 4 4 7. That's a great combo. And we'll throw him into the backfield. And we're going back to chasing a good quarter. We got Barry Valentine, great name, 5'9, 200 pounds, B catching, B press, C zone. Pretty good combine as well. And he's a better athlete than our first pick at corner. Final pick, we're gonna take a big swing on a big time athlete again. This is just, I wish we had more of a, of a shot at like filling out other positions versus just trying to constantly go BPA. That's where we're at, that's the nature of this rebuild. Tremaine Pruitt, D-tackle to Florida, 6'3", 320. So he's built like a nose tackle. And we got fourth fastest 40 yard dash, best bench press. Three cone is elite for a man of this size. Dang. Is this our first draft, no hidden devs? All right, well, we didn't get any dev trade players. I think we probably, I'm going to guess 270 plus. Definitely the first center was 70 plus. 72 for Matt Stanley. So I think we're going to make him our center. And then we'll take Gibson, our current star dev center, and move him to one of the tackle spots. Pass protector helps as well. So that's still a solid pick. We got French, 65. Eh. Uh, Greg Johnson, 69. We got Calvin Wheeler, 66. The running back, Gilliard, 75. So he's literally like Noble, except Noble, when we drafted him way back in year one, had a dev trade with him. Very similar skill set. Maybe he's a little bit more athletic than Noble is out the gate. That's, that. I mean, it's not, we, this is not our first 72, 73 plus running back that was UDFE. I think the other running back that we have on our bench right now, RB2, was also like mid-70s. So they do exist somewhat commonly. So if you are, you know, in your personal drafts, sixth round, seventh round, take a look at some of those power backs. They can pop with good ratings. Barry Valentine, 67, and Pruitt, 68. So generally speaking, all UDFAs, no one below a 65 is a win. Just stings not getting any guys with the dev trade. You know what? I'm disrespecting our current, like I'm kind of looking at like, just how do how should I shuffle this O-line up? I'm going to shuffle Stanley, the center, into right guard, just competition there for Vickers. I mean, that's pretty damn good. 78, scheme fit at 27 for Carter Mitchell, left tackle. Acting like I got to replace him. He's been solid. Year six, the Eagles up to an 82 overall, led by an 84 offense. And, I mean, obviously you know the offense by now. From the draft, uh, no new starters. We got some depth pieces, I suppose. But we're, we're looking forward to this. Man, another year, another opportunity to be great. Another opportunity to go for the playoffs, try to shock the world. And one thing I was like, I was kind of setting the depth chart. Zimmerman was a hidden dev rookie, lost his dev trade. Which is uh, rather unfortunate. You hate to see that. Just deaf guys that aren't playing lose their dev. Uh, which kind of sucks. Especially in the context. It's super hard to draft UDFA guys. That pop hit a dev. But it is what it is. Only real change I am making. I'm going Walden. The second year linebacker. I'm going to give him an opportunity to start over Childers. 
Just he's a little bit more of an athletic sideline to sideline type linebacker and a scheme fit. But uh, yeah, man, let's see just how it all breaks down here this season. What do we have last year? Eight wins? Seven wins? Eight, well, seven wins. Eight wins with that last one against the Giants. Let's try to do that again here this year in year six. And I'm not playing elite pass rushers. Now we have an opportunity. If you're the same level, same rating as our team, you're probably one of the weaker teams. So let's start week one season opener at home against the Green Bay Packers. Let's do it, man. Okay, offense. Got to try to equalize. The defense gave up seven. I love play the moments. All right. Maynard. I mean, Maynard just quickly. We'll do it ourselves. Cousins takes off. QB keeper gain of nine. Keeps the drive alive. We'll say, man, we are getting to a point. Guys like Noble, especially in position with regression, they're not going to be, a, you know, they're gonna, it's going to start happening sooner than later. So uh, we're getting, you know, seven wins. We're getting pretty, like, our guys are going to get old enough. Like, we're going we gonna to win now in this window. Like, Middleton's getting out there in age a little bit. Look at him fighting his ass off. Touchdown! He will not be denied. He runs through half the Packers' defense. Tie this one up at seven. We got a turnover there. Third down. Let's go. Yeah, that's just a terribly inaccurate throw. Right? I mean, that was good play. He was open. There was pressure in the face of our quarterback, but what a wasteful drive. Play some defense. Got Wakefield superstar D tackle. You know, he's got to command a double team. We push the pocket. Why? What setting do I need to, to hit? Auto flip. I don't want that. I don't. Is this what I need? No. Why does it take so long? If I'm using a D tackle, I am smashing. Rachel Bush smashing the B button to switch to one of those linebacker and or safety to pull off whatever, like just sitting there in coverage and go rush the quarterback. Never. It, it, it just like input delay of some sort. Easy touchdown there, Green Bay. Oh, well, that's an easy tutty. So that was a little bit further down the field. That's a good play. Let's remember that when we get, you know, within the 20. Third and one, we'll audible to the run here. Of course not. Of course not. No huddle. No huddle. We're going for it. Slants. Let's go. Of course not. Third and one. Of course not. Let's see it. Let's move the chains here. Don't like anything about that. And I assume that's going to be rough in the passer. If that's holding, I hate my life. It is rough in the passer. Tack on 15. Really need to put seven on the board before halftime. All right, who wants it? Who wants the touchdown? The touchdown to be had. And we go to Middleton. Under the middle, man. That's just, you know, good. I'm not going to be able to run the most extensive playbook here. My team still, at this point, not amazing. You know, you got to make it work. Got to play a little bit of defense here. Third and ten. Get off the field. Give ourselves a chance on offense to tie it up. Just, I'm getting, I'm getting just, getting bored here, man. Every time we come in, it seems like we just cannot win. But when we do win, it's going to feel that much better, right? Do it ourselves. Want something done right? You got to do it yourself. on defense let's go let's play a little defense here I'm a little worried pressure is on me i can't blame anybody else if we can't get a stop let's go henry superstar pass rusher or they just somehow split the defense this guy's 22 of 27 okay miles sanders couldn't get the first down i mean let's do it let's crowd the line they're going to go quick throw because we blitz the linebacker. They do. Check down. Move the chains. Also, I don't think I've got a sack when I play defense. We are in year six. Don't think we've been able to get a lot of pressure. That looks like should be a hold. Pushing back out of the... Uh, make it a little bit harder of a field goal range. We can keep it here. Come on, Wakefield. Get going. Superstar. Let's see it. You're a superstar. You got to make superstar type plays. Okay, we'll go back in coverage on this one. Maybe get a pick. They're going to run it. 
All right, both of our uh, team, everyone outside the Cowboys, shockingly, huh? Cowboys in the sim. They're the only team that hasn't lost the FCs. Would you believe it? Uh, we got the Commanders here. Fuck, I already know we're going to get sacked by nine times by Chase Young, but it's, it's a battle of winless teams. What better time to get our first? On the road in Washington, down three, get the ball on the 30. Perfect time to get Noble involved. Move the chains, keep the drive alive. Gets blocked up well enough. He still has to run through a bunch of guys, but moves the chains. I mean, that's been another thing that needs to be said. He's like, I like Noble, but it seems like a lot of the games that... Whoa, we've been on the sticks. We're behind. We can't really commit to the run. We have an unbalanced offense, which obviously when you throw it a bunch, you're going to be opening yourself up to a lot of sacks. But we got a lead right now. And Noble do it again. Third and two on the 49. Running against the strength of this commander's defense, which is his defensive line. That's going to be close. If it's inches, I think we go for it. QB sneak. We are that desperate for a win, and they won't let me go for it. Luckily, our defense bails us out. And we're back on offense. Another third and short. This is all we're getting here. Let's keep it with Noble. He's one for two, 50%. Yeah, that's just uh, disgustingly bad blocking up front. Go for the field goal. Oh, they want to go for it. Well, you can't say you're going to put me in here just to kick a field goal. We are going to go for it. Take a shot play, Chamberlain. Keep that in, but I'll just, I'm probably looking Maynard. We go back to the tight end and over Salem by three yards. All right, awesome. Come on, Wakefield. Do something. Like it's the double team, which makes things easier for Robert Keys, Bobby Trees, Alter Ego. And we got. Oh, his name's Randy, isn't it? Go, oh, Randy Keys. Randy. I don't know. Fuck it. Have a better name. Have a more memorable name. But they throw to the end zone. That. That's uh, that's just not fun right there. That's that's all you can. There's your analysis for that one. Four verts until they can stop it. Four verts until they prove to me they can stop it. Even on the five. Let's go trail shake. We're going with the pick. Second and goal. Usually anytime Middleton runs this in the red zone, he finds a way to get open. You have to do some work on that one, though. Third and goal. Let's go back. Same kind of play. Middleton. Right around the goal line. Just find him. All right. That, that, all right. Didn't work out. Kick the field goal. We have a great kicker, kicker of the year. Let's utilize him. And we get a great roll here. Get to start off the second half in the red zone. On the two, it's Noble, who's had some tough short yardage runs already here today. And uh, breaks two tackles because he has to. He does what he needs to. And the Eagles get a touchdown lead. Give one up. Just had the lead for a couple seconds, and it's gone. Chance to get off the field, though. Third and eight at about midfield. We get a stop here. This is going to be a punt. Let's go, Henry. Our superstar pass rusher actually wins. And the pressure affects the throw on Jalen Hurts. Force the punt. And we're back on defense. Offense can't do much. That's fine. It's third and 15. We can bail you out yet again. Heat, and we have a defensive end drop back to cover. So we'll go Wakefield. They just chuck it. And Reese gets the deflected pick. And we get 15. Face mask on the tight end. Let me come in on offense. Thank you. Third and one. Boom. Boom. Looking for contact. Smashes. All right, I think they almost let they let us score, but there's the hat trick for Noble. 
Play a little defense. Let's win this. Mine. Oh, Carruthers steals it from Scary Terry. And that is going to be it. What a pick on the outside against the best player on the Commanders. It's just nice to win one. Make me feel like I don't completely suck at this game. We get a win. 30 to 70 on the back of Christopher Noble. 93 yards, three rushing touchdowns, and a hell of an interception by Carruthers on the outside against Scary Terry. And hell yeah, after the big odds, Scary Terry Carruthers gets the upgrade. Very much deserved. Now up to an 80 overall star corner. And we're actually able to follow it up with a week five victory over the Browns, 28 to seven, where we got Carruthers on fire. Biggest play against the Commanders in the next week, four tackles, two interceptions. Where's his breakout scenario? Upgrade for Scotty Cousins and we get the all important plus one throw power. We get three victories in a row, beating the Bears 28 21. Now I'm always thinking, like, do we keep the momentum going and just keep simming against Dallas? Or do I take the momentum, hop on the sticks against Dallas, and try to give them their first loss of the year? You know me. I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's go. Let's beat Dallas. Well, curious about this matchup. 28 points. Who did what? Scotty Cousins. Two touchdowns, no picks. Also had a rushing touchdown. Noble with a solid performance. 78 yards. Touchdown for Maynard and Middleton. Defensively, two tackles. Stephen Henry, one from Jeremiah Moon. And we're 3-3. Three three. Looking to go 4-3 this week against Dallas. Looking to get our third straight victory. It's against Dallas. They score on their opening drive. Love of God, don't let Micah Parsons take this game. But we are in field goal range. No sacks. We will be able to get points on this first drive. We'll go to the running back, Noble, underneath. Looking for contact. And that is a gain of eight. Drive continues. All right, so it's first and ten. Go all the way back to Farrell. The backup tight end outruns Micah Parsons. And the Eagles tie this one up at seven. Defense gets us a stop. Another third down opportunity. Third and four. Oh my God, I thought he had it. I don't hate that shot. He had, I mean, he's a drop. He, that was a good throw. He could hold on to it. Yeah, there's Micah. Hey, what's up, Micah? I haven't seen you yet. Dude, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know how you combat that. Shift the line, like just everybody blocks him. All right, going to halftime, 7-7. Seven, seven. We got a third and seven. After a long opening drive here from Dallas. Not even really that long, honestly. Like one big shot play, I suppose. Oh, my God. Wakefield blows that play up. Dak scrambles. And we're able to, you know, hold him to the field goal. A little dice here. Third and nine. Third and long. This is going to be one. Just at least we're going to be able to run away from Micah Parsons a little bit. Doesn't matter. No one gets open. Doesn't matter. This Barkley guys is feasting. Let's hold. Let's kill the rest of this game off and win the touchdown. Is that too much to ask? Maynard's quick slant underneath to move the chains. Let's take this to the two-minute warning. The slants. Let's go back to it, man. The playbook, our bread and butter. Ah, ah. Oh, over the shoulder. Red zone. Let's go, Maynard. Audible to a run. Audible to a run. They're not going to expect it. And he's a monster. I mean, we might have scored too early. That's the downside of this. Might have scored too early, but we have the lead. It's on the defense. Mine. Oh, let's go. What a pick. Cooks. The backup safety. Holy shit. Back-to-back -back games. Back-to-back -back potential game-sealing interceptions. We got a third and seven. Need a first down to end it. What better play than the slants, a.k.a. the play that most teams just run against us anyways. 
And we got Y right open. Maynard at the sticks. That will do it. The win streak continues for the Philadelphia Eagles. Holy shit. Let's go, baby. 14-10. That's about as good as the 14-10 game as you were going to see. Actually, a little intrigued with the stats here. No, clean game. No pick, Scotty Cousins. 50 yards, one touchdown. Noble Maynard, just so reliable. Eight catches, 108 yards on those slants, on those quick throws. Henry, two sacks. Pick for Hargrove. Pick for Cooks. Classic Dak Prescott. And the Eagles give the Cowboys their first L of the year. And I almost feel like we got to just roll our fourth game that we can come in. Arizona, now they're two and four. The record's pretty good, but we got an opportunity for a breakout. I'm going to guess it's Maynard after that big matchup. He's star. I could be looking for superstar. Get John Maynard three touchdowns or 150 yards rushing, receiving. Get him up to a superstar. I think that is more than enough motivation for us to cash in our fourth sticks opportunity to get a superstar dev for a wide receiver. Potentially, it's going to be tough. Not a gimme. And our fourth win in a row. For this one, I'm playing all offense. I'm not going to lie, it's not going to be pretty, but we are going to force feed Maynard. Force feed. Like, borderline, like, we might throw picks. You almost could argue a superstar wide receiver, our first, is, is more important than a win right now. But both would be cool. Look, like they're letting them have it. Oh, my God. Come on. Come on. Oh, my God. I don't care. I'm not even, you know, I'm not going to gloat. Not gonna glow. We needed that. That was nasty. What a start! Seven for seven. Okay, I mean the picks are gonna happen, right? They're gonna flip the switch. Everything's gonna be a fumble in the second half. I'm sure of it. Second like ten, inaccurate, but it still makes it to Maynard. I mean, there's a reason why, man. He got the dev. He is just one of those guys, always kind of open. Seven catches. I mean, we need 30 more yards. We're gonna hit this for halftime. Let's go. That's what he does. I don't care what your rating is. He breaks tackles. Oh, there we go. Oh, let's go! Holy terrible throw. Don't know how they didn't hold on to that. And the pressure gets there. Take the points. I mean, we still got to try to focus on the win at the end of the day. Kick is good. We go up 17, down to the half, and the ball to start the second half. Boom at the sticks. Maynard holds on to it. We're getting close. We got to be at like 140 something. 133. There's another gain of 10. 144, we'll call it. Boom. Got it. Got it. Super soft coverage. We have a superstar wide receiver, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's make sure we get this one over the line and get the dub. B? B? I mean, I think those arguably two throws that should have been caught. Not terrible balls. Third and 19. A field goal to extend the lead wouldn't be the worst thing, but I'll just, let's keep running it up. Yeah, there's a drop. Settle for the field goal. Arizona gets their first touchdown of the game. Fourth quarter. Put this one away, man. Now it's time. We got... We got our... We got our dev. Let's get the win. I'm fine just chewing the clock. But the O-line had different ideas on that drive. And they go right down. Of course they do. Right down the field. Score touchdown. Minute 39. Let's get a first down and win the game. That's off. That's soft coverage on Young. If we can hit him right around the 40. It's over. Oh. Over. And there's the dub. Side over the line. And more importantly, Maynard absolutely feasted. 11 catches. 155 yards. We got a goalie boy. Tell me about my breakout player. Tell me about how well he played. Why'd I tell you, coach? One of the best players on the team. He proved it. John Maynard, superstar dev. Wide receiver. So we said five and three after the bye, but that is the last time we'll be able to kind of hop in and influence things. But let's take a look at some contracts here. Again, like, you know, the whole thing about this series is that anytime it comes time to pay somebody, uh, we can do so. What? Why is Sam Howell on my team? 
Uh, we got Childers at linebacker. Again, don't really use him a lot, but you just don't want to let that guy walk. He's good depth. Maybe, you know. The next time we got to negotiate with some linebacker, they don't want to stay, and we're, we're glad that we have that depth. We got Rayshon Rudolph, another depth corner, corner four on the team, worth keeping around. Uh, I think we probably can move on from Moon at that age. Carruthers, of course. The guy that's kind of having a breakout year also gets to get a little bit of a bag here. We'll give him a four-year deal. Get him locked up. We have Scotty Cousins at quarterback. What is he looking for? 55 mil over three years. I feel like we go four. I don't think we're at a we're at a place where we're going to be getting a new quarterback for this rebound. I think Scotty Cousins is going to be our guy. If we're going to be able to find a way, go on a playoff run, win a Super Bowl, he is going to be the man under center that can do so. We got Wakefield. Get him here for the remainder of his career. Easy decision. We'll give him four years. 46 mil. Size that line. We're the best kicker in the NFL. Very, very likewise. Let's get him for the remainder of his career. That's a lot of money thrown around. We still have like $80 million in cap. And we've lost like every game since that win streak because we've been simming. <sighs> Good news is right after that, you know, we got a, another plus one throw power for Scotty Cousins. Hey, back in the win column against the Giants. That's actually like a kind of a must win, honestly. Beat the Cardinals, beat the Steelers in the sim. We lost to the Titans bad, Bengals bad, close loss against the Vikings, Giants pretty bad, close loss against the Lions, and then at least back in the win column late, 35-21, Cousins, I mean the throw power, let's act like that's outstanding. 338, three touchdowns, no picks, 83 yards, a touchdown for Noble, Maynard, the superstar, two touchdowns, a breakout year continues, Wakefield with a sack, picks for Church and Carruthers. Well, I'm shocked Carruthers has not got up dev trade, or at least had a dev trade scenario. Damn it. Close up the, I think we had to win that one. Week 18, close loss against the Commanders, 28-25. We finished 8-9. I mean, again, progress clearly there. But looking for that last playoff spot, yeah, we would have had to. Uh, definitely nine wins was the threshold, competing with the Falcons and the Saints. That's because we beat the Saints too, man. I think... We beat the Saints, beat the Cowboys. Perfect. I think we might have beat the Bears as well. But, uh, you know, I just can't have that. But we're, we're getting there. We are so freaking close. And look at the end of year number six. The Texans win the Super Bowl 42-21 with Jonathan Taylor. Kind of shuffling along there in the division as their big dog. Taking a look at our squad as it relates to stats. And then we'll look at the roster. Scotty Cousins. I feel like he's playing better than this, man. Like, that's bang on average quarterback numbers for him. Around the ball, 1,013 for Chris Noble. The, uh, the wide receiver, Maynard, 80 catches, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. We get 890 and 2 for Chamberlain. Middleton, 750 and 5, 730 and 6 for Dion Young. And on the defensive side, Jaden Church continues to be a tackle monster. Yancey, tackle monster. Our sacks were non existent this year. Wakefield, not a good year. Henry, not a great year. I mean, Key, sure. 19 TFLs, I'll take that. Five picks for Carruthers. Continued his breakout year, even though we never got a dev trade scenario. Edward Cooks is our backup safety. And he went up dev. Holy shit. Okay. Got to find... Like, he's behind... You know what it is, though? Because we have Church playing sub-linebacker. So that is how he's getting on the field. That is a... That's a win. Hargrove with three picks. Church with two picks. Kicker, Tommy Washington, he didn't lose his dev, did he? That wasn't a great year. Nope, just kept his start dev. Cool, cool, cool. Look at the yearly awards. MVP goes to Mason Cole because of, you know, definitely just because the Bucks are the Bucks, right? Definitely nothing to do with the playbooks or anything crazy like that. No award winners this year for the Philadelphia Eagles, so we need to look right before we can get into the final draft. How did our roster shape up? I mean, some pretty underperforming numbers. We might lose some devs. On the offensive side of the ball, we have Middleton. Once an X Factor, I mean, the 93 overall is outstanding, but he has regressed down to a star dev, which kind of sucks. Uh, Maynard keeps his dev. Defensively, Carruthers up to a superstar. That is a win for sure. We have Cooks went up dev, but we lost dev. Superstar for Henry down to a star. Superstar for Wakefield down to a star. Keys at least up off normal to a star. But that sucks, man, losing two superstars on your D-line, but... Can't blame them, man. They did not have great years. All right, so we have a couple options for our first pick. There's a there's a pretty crazy wide receiver, but I think we'll wait for him. I think the best stats, Florida Gator bias. We got R.J. Duvall at guard. Again, offensive line, just keep building. Keep building. The combine, not that good, honestly. But we're going to go with the stats, which means probably high rating 
no dev trait for RJ Duvall, but the A impact, A pass block. Anytime you get an A in pass for a run block, you're going to take it, and we get our dev trait. After last year's draft, not getting one hidden dev player, we start this one out right. It is tough to get pass rushers. I don't think we've got a hidden dev pass rusher yet. We've got hidden dev linebackers. We've got hidden dev D tackles. Yet to get a hidden dev pass rusher. So this is, you know, athletically speaking, decent. Bench press, get the, you know, the combine, call it, he crushed it at his pro day. Kendrick Peterson, stats aren't much to write home about. It's it's UDFAs, man. It's what we're working with. Damn it. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm about, I'm about ready to say from our testing, I don't think there's hidden dev pass rushers that go UDFA. We're going to continue to chase hidden devs on the offensive line. We got Jensen, a UDFA tackle, B winners, B impact, B run block. Decent combine, and he's, uh, you know, swing tackle. All right, here's, here's the, I can't, I mean, as soon as I saw the combine, I was like, let's fully scout this guy. James Pounds, second, third round talent, UDFA. And, you know, look at that right there. You're like, okay, B deep routing's pretty good. C catching, C catch traffic, nothing to write home about. It's not height, weight, speed, but he sure as shit is speed. Four, two, three cone. Those are the two most important things you want to look for for a wide receiver, I think. 40-yard, three cones, pretty much speed, agility. He is going to be very good. He's got to be 98 speed, 90, uh, 98 acceleration, sorry, 97 speed, 92 change of direction. An absolute burner. We're needing another tight end, tight end room. We've had our tackles out there. So we're going to go Luke Sheffield, kind of like the best athlete remaining at the tight end spot. And we don't need linebacker, but it's just us to continue just drafting athletes with a hope. Hail Mary that they might pop it up. We got Manny Jordan, very athletic linebacker of Arizona State. Normal dev. Let's take a look at the draft recap here to kind of round out the episode. I feel pretty good. We got our two hidden devs. Duval, 71 hidden dev lineman. Beautiful. Love seeing that. I don't know if we're, we're probably have to plug and play him somewhere. Find a way for him to get reps. Don't him losing that dev. Kendrick Peterson, 67. We have Jensen Tackle, 66. Pounds, our second, third round grade. Hit it at wide receiver. I mean, we have got a couple. Like, if you had to say the one position that we have got devs, it's either linebacker or wide receiver. Those guys there, they usually get, feels like at least one or two a draft class. There's a hidden dev guy. As long as you can find them, at least, you know, times like this where it's clearly just the fast guy, it's easier to detect versus if you're trying to decipher, like, who's going to have a hidden dev for guys that are running like four fives, four sixes. Uh, oh, that was almost, our, I think, our first almost 50. Luke Sheffield, a tight end. One with the athlete, our first draft pick yet. All UDFAs. I think that's a pretty good track record. We've been picking strictly UDFAs. We've yet to get someone below a 60, but that might be our lowest pick so far. Manny Jordan, the athletic linebacker, 68. And we have Nance, kind of just finished with the draft, 66 at the guard spot. But I'll take two hidden devs after last year getting zero. Yeah, pretty cool. We get a wide receiver mentorship. Pounds with its history repeating itself. Denzel Chamberlain, our first ever pick in this series speedster hidden dev james pounds career coming full circle he wants to mentor him so we're gonna work on getting open let's get that deep route running going maximize the 90 what is he 97 speed something crazy like that so it'd be silly not to use this athleticism denzel chamberlain one of the best deep threats in the nfl to release to deep route running love seeing that those end on episode four we end with an 84 overall team that last year was very very close to making the playoffs for the first time. We still got four more years left to go. This team is trending in the right direction. We're going to bump pounds up here. The depth chart just a little bit. Making wide receiver four. This is kind of what it's looking like. Maynard, superstar. And Duvall. I almost feel like we just got to kind of have to get him on the field. To maximize that dev trait. Even if it's taking us from a, a B- minus to a C. Might be better four years down the line that we that we start him right now. So I think that's what we're going to do there. Sucks that we, you know, just watch the regression of Middleton. At least it relates to Dev trait in front of our eyes. But it just is what it is, man. It can't all be good. Can't all be positive. I'm still happy that we're drafting Hidden Dev. UDFAs. Defensively, again, a little bit of a, of a down year. Losing two of our superstars in Henry and Wakefield. But at least Carruthers, we have a superstar corner. We got Church still just crushing it. The best strong safety in the NFL. What a, what a story. UDFA to being the number one ranked strong safety in the league. Outstanding playmaker for this defense. And uh, leaves us with a great starting point for episode five as we return for episodes. What are we, what are we doing? Five, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Seven and eight. We'll be back. We'll probably be, this is, what is it, Tuesday? 
I'm thinking Thursday or Friday, we'll be back with the new episode of this. So thank you guys very much for all the love and continued support on this series. I'm glad you guys are digging it as much as you are. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out, love you, and have a good one.